What is your name, please? My name is Ed Method. My name is Ed Method. My name is Ed Method. Only one of these men is the real Lieutenant Ed Method. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. The star of Play Your Hunch, Merv Griffin, Dina Merrill, Ralph Bellamy, and Peggy Cass. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. Welcome once again to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Aerowax, made with natural wax for a shine that mops back naturally. Aerowax. Ralph, nice to have you back with us. Thank you, bud. Delighted to be here. Hey, exciting Always. news that you're rehearsing for a, a Westinghouse special, isn't it? Yes, on CBS, I believe. What's the name of it? Uh, the First Day. And uh, when can we look for it? Pretty soon? I think around the end of June. I've forgotten the date. It's, we're taping it, and I think it goes on about the end of we'll June. We'll watch for it. Okay, panel, good evening to all of you. Good evening. Right. Nice to see you down there. Thank First you, time we've done this one together. Yes. And uh, will you open up your envelopes, take out your affidavit cards for the first time, and follow along as I read from this first one. I, Edward Method, am a commercial airline pilot and a lieutenant in the United States Air Force. One day, while flying over Niagara Falls, my Super Sabre jet caught fire. I did not dare bail out over a populated area. With no engine and only the rudder for control, I guided the wobbly ship toward the gorge below Niagara Falls. I shot through the unfinished span of a bridge with less than two feet clearance at each wingtip. At only 200 feet above the cliffs of the gorge, I fired my ejection seat, which threw me clear of the ship. My parachute barely broke my fall when I hit the ground feet first in a pile of soft earth. I walked to a phone, called the base, and rode back in the front seat of the ambulance they sent for me. Signed, Lieutenant Edward Metha. Now, panel, you heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be Edward Metha, Air Force Lieutenant. And we will start this questioning in this first round with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Uh, number one, uh... Is Niagara Falls of the United States? Yes, it is. Number two, is the Niagara Falls also in Canada? Yes, there is. Mm, well, that's my knowledge of Niagara Falls. <laughs> uh, uh, how many motors, do, number three, how many motors does a Super Sabre jet have? Just one. Uh, number two, um, when the ejection seat throws you up, how far up does it go before the parachute opens? Well, the seat goes up about uh, 50 to 100 feet, then pushes you out and opens the uh, chute automatically. Uh, number one. All right. Lieutenant number one, uh, the affidavit says you're a commercial airline pilot and a lieutenant in the United States Air Force, both at the same time? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I was reactivated into the uh, Air Force by President Kennedy's orders last October from the National Guard. May I ask which commercial airline you fly for? Yes, sir, United Airlines. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, where is your Air Force Base? Niagara where? Falls Air Force Base. Uh, what city is that here? Uh, Niagara Falls, about four miles out of the city. Is that a jet base? Yes, 9,000 foot runway. Lieutenant number three, are you a New York boy? <laughs> yes, sir, I am. Mm -hmm. May I ask where you trained, Lieutenant number three? In Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. Dina. Uh, Lieutenant number three, uh, what does VFR mean? Uh, visual flight rules, I believe. Uh, Lieutenant number two, what does IFR mean? Instrument flight rules. Lieutenant number three, uh, uh, excuse me, number one. You said when you shot through the unfinished span of a, of a bridge, you mean like this, the things that go up like this, or underneath the bridge itself? Well, actually, the bridge is uncompleted. It's coming from the Canadian side and the American side like this. And I went yes. directly on through the unfinished portion. There was no, uh, there was no overhead. That's right. There was no overhead. Went right on through it. Ralph. Uh, number one, do you know, happen to know the height of the falls, the height of Niagara Falls? Well, I, I never did find out from anyone locally there, but I would say about 300, 400 feet. Number two, do you know? 167 feet. Number three, what would you say? I don't know. Um, number one, where did you serve? Uh, 
during the uh, when you were in service? Well, I, I most of, most of my service was in the United States. Uh, there was number no war two, at the time. Excuse me. Number two, what were the circumstances of your being reactivated by order or uh, appointment of the president? <clears throat> there was a little bit of excitement in Berlin. Uh, reactivated uh, first of October. And um, what were the circumstances? Why? Right, we can't find out. We have to go now to the circumstances of signing and marking ballots, if you will, please, panel. So <clears throat> don't look so pained about it, Peggy. It'll <clears throat> come to you. <laughs> Think it over and mark your ballots, if you will, right now without consultation. Vote as you do so for number one, number two, or number three. A team of challengers will, as is customary, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. How are we doing? All ballots marked? <laughs> one to go. Okay. Merv, which one did you think is the real one? But I voted for number two because he is not wearing a uniform. And he's torn tonight between wearing a uniform or wearing civilian clothes in hopes that the president is watching him and will get him out of the service and back to his... <laughs> That's a terrible thing. Wow, what an imagination you've got. Well, <laughs> Dina. Well, but I voted for number two also. Um, number three kind of hesitated on BFR, which is uh, something my husband, being a pilot, uses all the time. I'm sure a commercial pilot would know instantly. And I was kind of torn between number one and two, but number two hasn't got a uniform. I voted for him. Well, Ralph, which one did you select? Number two. I think he called the height of the falls correctly, and the other two uh, weren't too sure. And there seemed to be a glint in the eye with respect to the uh, presidential reactivation. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> and Peggy, what about your vote? I voted for number one because I felt that he didn't really want to get called back. And number two told me more than I really cared to know. He, like, volunteered extra. <laughs> All right, let's find out which of these systems that they can be called that is right and which one is wrong as we, having come to that point now to make a perfect landing, we'll uh, determine the identity of the real Air Force Lieutenant. So will the real Edward Methot please stand up? Enough, you questioned him the I least of any. He had VFR, fewer questions. I believe. <laughs> well, but Boy. I love this bouncing ten pin thing they did as to who's up and who's down. Yes, Merv. He said he trained it in Texas, and yet he's part of the National Guard of New York. Well, the National Guard is the National Guard. Did you care to explain that in any way? Well, you get your training in the Air Force, and then when you get out of the service, if you wish to, you join the National Guard, wherever you may be. That's what threw me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out about the other two. Number one, you got a vote. Would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Gary Saunders, and I'm a general sales manager for uh, Security Blueprint in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And number two, you got most of the votes. What is your real name and what do you really do? I'm, my name is Malcolm Pennington, and I prepare economic analyses for the European Common Market Newsletter. <laughs> also prepared yourself very well for the show. I think before telling you what the score is, it's only fair to mention that uh, Lieutenant Method, by not bailing out of his plane over a populated area and thereby risking his own life, uh, is to be awarded the Air Medal. And I think he... <laughs> Check the score, we find that you really did it. You pulled the panel all the way, and that's a total of four incorrect votes at $250 each. You can all add that, I'm sure. It's a total of $1,000 from Arawak. <laughs> <laughs> and a gift package of fine products from the makers of Arawak. Thank you, gentlemen. We're proud to know you tonight. God bless you. Thank you this time to present our next team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Flora Gebhardt. My name is Flora Gebhardt. My name is Flora Gebhardt. You follow along again, panel, with this affidavit. I, Flora Gebhardt, am a locksmith. My husband is a legal safe cracker. Every two years, we attend the convention of the Associated Locksmiths of America. 
At the last convention, in competition with the top lady locksmiths, I opened a lock without a key in one minute, 41 seconds. I am the current national champion lady lock picker. <laughs> Signed, Laura Gebhardt. All right, here they are settled and ready to play our game. And panel, you heard them all claiming to be Flora Gebhardt, female locksmith or lock picker, whichever way you want to call it. We'll start this cross-examination with Merv Griffin. Merv? Thank you, bud. Ms. Gebhardt, number one, you picked this lock without a key? That's right. How do you go about it? You have a tension bar and a pick tool. Slower, please. I want to write all this down. <laughs> you have a what? Tension bar. Tension bar. And a little pick tool. Pick tool. And you go in the keyhole, mm -hmm. and you hold up all the pins with the tension bar, mm -hmm. straighten them out with the pick tool, and you tickle. <laughs> Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Ms. Gebhardt, number two. And do you agree, Ms. Gebhardt, number three? Yes. How does your husband, uh, Ms. Gebhardt, number three, get off by picking locks legally? He's bonded. <laughs> A lot of us are. <laughs> Dina. Uh, Ms. Gebhardt, number three. What does that mean when you say he's bonded? A uh, national association puts up a certain bond to uh, guarantee the customer that the, he doesn't do anything wrong. That makes sure he's legal. Yes. Hundred proof. <laughs> <laughs> Not a hundred proof. <laughs> Mrs. Gebhardt, number two. Did you learn this from your husband? I yes, mean, I did. You did. He also knows how to pick locks besides doing Yes, safe. his main business is safe cracking, but it got to be such a large business that he asked me to help. <laughs> well, uh, Mrs. Gebhardt, number one. Uh, did he start out as a locksmith and then get into safe cracking? Yes, he did. He started. <laughs> Better than the other way to start out as a safe cracker and get into locksmith. <laughs> Ralph. Um, number one, you said you only had these two tools. I didn't write it down, uh, as Merv did. Merv has it. Uh, where does a hairpin come into it? Isn't a hairpin uh, figure usually in picking a lock? <laughs> no, we don't use hairpins. Well, um, <laughs> tell me, how many legal lock pickers are there? In the United States, yes. men and women? Yes. Well, there are about a thousand all together. And who are they employed by? Well, most of them run their own businesses. Some are employed <laughs> by... <laughs> it's safer that way, Ralph. <laughs> Number two, uh, what's... Uh, Peggy. Number two, what are tumblers? Tumblers are these divisions in the lock, and they have to follow a certain way when the key is placed in the lock in order for the lock to open. Thank you. Number three, what does Mosler make? They make safe. Thank you. Uh, number one, was Willie Sutton a safe cracker? I don't know. Uh, number one, do you have to file your, 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 your pads with your fingers down with the memory board? No. Oh, <laughs> they do it in, in the story. Uh, number two, what is Yale in town? Yale in town is a town in Connecticut, but Yale, actually, uh, Linus Yale has invented the Yale lock. That's it. Got to lock up the door real tight now. Let the tumblers fall where they may. And take your wax impressions and your keys in hand and mark up those ballots, if you will, please, without any more questions. And, of course, without consultation, you will vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, everybody set? All ballots marked? And we go first to... Dina, have you marked yours? No, I will. <laughs> Murr, which one did you select this time? But I voted for Lady uh, Mrs. Gebhardt number three. For a very good reason. If I were a judge at a locksmith picker's convention, and that lady picked a lock in front of me, I'd vote her number one locksmith picker in the whole world. <laughs> in fact, I might vote her mother of the locksmith pickers of the whole world. <laughs> Dina. Well, I voted for number three, too. <laughs> I would imagine that a profession like this takes time and experience, and I think number three looks as though she's had some experience in this category. <laughs> I didn't say it's that. It's more like she would mother a lock if she was yeah. picking. <laughs> Ralph. I voted for number two. Uh, I thought she, um, well, we didn't ask her many questions and she um, didn't have much information to give us. She was very quick and ready with what she did give us. Just a hunch, I guess. Thank you. Well, I voted for number three because she's my idea of a real safe cracker. <laughs> well, I hope.
hope there are some compliments hidden in there somewhere. I don't see them on the surface. But in any event, let's get to the matter of the truth right now. And uh, we'll open up the right combination, and that will reveal the truth. And so here we go to determine which one of these ladies is the real female locksmith. So will the real Laura Gebhardt please stand up? I have to take my hat off to the dramatic way in which they're building up the suspense of late they're doing more of this. It's me, it's I, it's you, it's he, you know, who's what here? Well, congratulations that you really kind of, the panel kind of came through and they had to redeem themselves after the first round when they didn't get any. Number one, let's find out about you. What is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Jean George and I write and illustrate children's books. <laughs> Number two, your real name, and what do you do? My name is Sharon Renee Brown, and I am Miss Ideal Figure of 1961-62 in the current Miss United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> well, we checked the score this time. We find uh, challenges didn't do quite as well, because three of them really zeroed right in on you, mother of locksmith pickers, or whatever you want to call yourself. And, uh, but in any event, there's one incorrect, and that's $250 from Arawax. And if you had half the fun we did and the enjoyment in our company that we had in yours, that's more than made up for. <laughs> Thank you very much, and collect a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Arawax on your way out. Good night to you, and God bless you. <laughs> Let's meet our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is William Montagna. My name is William Montagna. My name is William Montagna. Follow along with this affidavit, if you will, please, panel. I, William Montagna, am a university professor of biology engaged in a study of the skin structure of primates, that group of animals which includes man as well as monkeys. The studies naturally led to the examination of the human scalp and produced, among other things, these interesting facts about baldness in men. Becoming bald as one grows older is a normal, not an abnormal condition. Baldness is hereditary. A man's hairline starts to recede before he is born. Bald heads are actually shinier. A normal scalp contains about 100,000 hairs, which grow at a combined rate of approximately one mile per month. And finally, the virility of a man bears absolutely no relation to the amount of hair on his head. Signed, William Montagna. <laughs> three gentlemen panel one with and two without I guess you might say all all claiming to be William Montagna biology professor and we'll start this round with Ralph Bellamy Ralph uh, number one there's an island in the Caribbean which is almost completely inhabited by monkeys do you know the name of it the San Juan Island number two would you say this is correct yes number three would you agree right. uh, number one what's your university Brown University. I suppose I get three different answers. Number two, what's your university? Rutgers University. Rutgers. Number three, where are you from? Yale University. Very <laughs> good. Um, number one, the affidavit says that there's absolutely no, oh no, I, um, anyway, that it's a normal procedure. What about these uh, groups that offer to grow hair and guarantee to grow hair? Is this a possibility in your estimation? It is not a possibility in my estimation. Not. Hey. Uh, number one, please. How many layers of the human skin? There are two layers. In the human skin? Yes. Number three, how many layers in a monkey's skin? Two. Two. Um, <laughs> uh, number two, uh, does a red-headed person have as many hairs as a... I mean, does the color of the head determine the amount of hairs on the head? No, ma'am. Number one, do you agree with that? I do indeed. Hmm. Number three... <laughs> Merv. Um, number one, is, is it unheard of for baldness to be, I know you'll disagree with this word, cured? 
not cure. There's no such a thing as curing something which is of nat natural occurrence. Is it possible, number one, for it to grow back? Unlikely. It is most unlikely. Do you agree, number two? Yes. Number three, do you agree? No. <laughs> uh, there are certain <laughs> types of baldness that can be cured. There are the pathological types of baldness. Mm -hmm. And the hair falls out in clumps. Falls out in what? Clumps. Clumps. <laughs> Nina! Number two, what is erythrophil? I do not know. What is what? <laughs> erythrophil. Oh. Number one, what is erythrophil? A red something or other, I don't know. Number three, do you know? I'm in the same boat. And I took biology in high school. What is xanthrophil, number three? Sorry. Number two? Number one? I don't think your first word was very well said. Forgive me. It's been a long time. <laughs> Xanthophil's yellow pigment. Thank you very much. Well, that's it. Time is gone, I'm sorry to say. So <laughs> I hope you had your fill of Xanthophil or whatever and uh, <laughs> read it in Boston Ballot. So will you kindly do so now, panel? <laughs> Pencils in hand and cards in front of you, oh, mark them up. Without consultation, <laughs> vote for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, Merv, for whom did you vote this time? Number three, would you tell us what your real name is and what you really <laughs> I voted for number three, Bud. I like his um, description of how it comes out in clumps. <laughs> if he's the real professor, anybody who'd use that kind of terminology deserves a vote. Clumps. Every time you hear any clump near you, you'll be looking around to see how much hair you've lost. Well, my clumps are fine, but... <laughs> Dina. Well, I, I voted for my number one who knew about my xanthrophil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> I voted for number three. Actually, I touted myself off number one for the same reason that uh, uh, Merv went along with the objection. Oh. Uh, <laughs> anyway, number three. And Peggy. Well, I voted for number three, although about that dancer, Phil, I never heard of it, he did. But number three just seems to just kind of know about hair. <laughs> he also had faith in its regrowth, you'll notice. <laughs> All right, there we have it. Moment of truth once again. <laughs> Bald or not, let's go right smack to the growth of the truth in our own particular medium here as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real biology professor. So will the real William Montagna... Please stand up. <laughs> thank you very much, Professor. We also thank Brown University for making your appearance possible on this show tonight. Oh, boy. Well, you and number, your club. You and your club. <laughs> number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Charles Nats. I'm a freelance fiction writer. <laughs> and number three, you fooled the panel the best. Uh, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Bill Nightingale, and I'm a cartoonist and promotion <laughs> manager for Supermarket News. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in checking the score, we find there were three incorrect clumps of votes, I should say. <laughs> and at $250 each, that brings us a total this time of $750, gentlemen. Not bad. And you had some laughs with us, too, and so did we. We thank you for that. On your way out, you'll receive also a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Arrowax. Thanks for being with us. Good night, and happy hair growing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm taking no chances. <laughs> I don't care whether it'll help or not. Let's not take any chances. Panel, thank you for the joy you always bring me personally, and I know that you bring to our audience as well. Good night to you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bud Collier is saying good night from Arrowax and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.
has been brought to you tonight by Aerowax, made with natural wax for a shine that mops back naturally. Aerowax. This is Johnny Olson saying goodnight for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded. <laughs>